Hi, everybody. Welcome to Multiplication Bootcamp Flexible Schedule Edition. Um, we're going to do a sample lesson today so you can kind of get a feel for how this class goes. Um, this is my very favorite class to teach. I made this class for my 12-year-old daughter named Natalie. She's 12 years old now. I made it for her two years ago. Um, constantly evolving the class, constantly making it better, more interactive, things like that. Um, but my daughter was having trouble remembering multiplication facts. And I thought, I'm going to find a class for her on online. So this is when I was a middle school math teacher and I was not an out school teacher yet. And um, I looked around for a multiplication boot camp class that was that would that would meet our needs. And there was nothing. There was nothing like the multiplication cl classes that I was signing her up for were just teaching about arrays and about um, repeated addition and all this stuff that kind of she already had that kind of down, but she can't go through all that work when she's trying to recall answers very quickly. So um, that night when I wasted some money on some classes, I went to bed and I thought, I'm going to make a class for my daughter. And that's where Multiplication Bootcamp was born. Um, I started doing this class live. And then eventually I um, made a flexible schedule version, which ends up helping so many families every year. Um, so now it's been running for two years. And I love the feedback I get. I love this class. And I, I, I love the messages I get from students saying, oh, my gosh, I love math now. Um, I am trying to change your uh, learner's attitude about math. And that's what I'm going to do in all of these lessons in my flex. So let's get started. We're going to um, we're going to just do a sample lesson. Um, all right. Hello, guys. Um, my name is Miss Tracy. I am here to teach you lesson number one, fact families, zeros, one and two. So we are going to start at the easiest fact families. And in this class, we're going to work up to the hardest fact families. Um, the reason that we're doing that is so that we can kill off as much of the multiplication chart as we can on the easy ones. Today's lesson might be a review for some of you, but as a middle school math teacher, I'm telling you guys, um, I understand that a lot of students are still making mistakes on zeros, ones, and twos. Um, and I am here to teach you not only how to get the answer to all of these um, facts, like this class is going to go over all of these multiplication facts that, of course, you know that your teachers and your parents and I, we all want you to know the answer to all of these facts. But we are also going to learn how to do bigger problems as well at the same time. Because if you're going to learn how to do 2 times 12, you might as well learn how to do 2 times 112 because it is the same logic being applied. And we are going to go through this magical list of rules that I have created for you. We're going to start with the zeros, go to the ones, go to the twos. And then the next lesson is going to be another batch and another batch and another batch and another batch. We are not necessarily going to go in order by value. We are going to go in order by the easiest to the hardest. And the zeros, ones, and twos happen to be the easiest. So you guys should enjoy this lesson. And I'm very proud of you guys for taking this step to learn um, multiplication with me because you guys are awesome and you are going to learn these skills. You're going to use these skills that you're going to learn in this class for the rest of your lives. You are also going to be able to teach your parents and teach your math teachers some of these things that we're learning in here because I'm going to tell you guys, when, when your parents and I and your math teacher and I were in school, we did not learn these fun things. We did not have fun learning math. It was very... Um, sad and boring. And we would cry. You can ask your parents about it. I don't know. Maybe they didn't cry, but I I used to be like, oh, I like they'd say memorize all these. I'd be like, I don't know how. So um, so it like freaked me out. So I don't know if people are saying to you, my students, if they're saying memorize these, well, we're gonna make this a ton more fun. And you're gonna be able to teach your adults in your life how to make math a little bit more fun and 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 you know also how to get answers quicker and how to do it in a more efficient way than just memorizing. Okay. So we are, we are memorizing, but we're, but we're doing it in a mathematical way. So let's get started here. Our first rule, that's the easiest rule in the whole universe. The easiest multiplication rule in the whole universe on your list here is the zeros rule. And what you need to know about the zeros rule, guys, is if you take zero times 
any base number. We're calling the other number the base number. So we have a rule number and a base number. That's the way this system is going to go um, in this class. So we have zero times any base number equals zero. Um, and this is the easiest one because, guys, for the whole rest of your life, you can use this. You can use this into middle school. You can use this into high school. You can use this into college. You can use this into your careers when you're older. You can teach this to your own babies when they are born. I don't know. You might have to wait a few years. But you. what I'm saying is this will never be wrong. Zero times any base number equals zero. 100% of the time. Easiest rule on earth. Um, let's look at some examples here. If I get to these problems, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, sometimes I get students in my live class and even in my flex that'll look at these problems and they'll want to add the numbers. Remember, we are not adding the numbers. We're multiplying. So what we are going to do is we are going to um, look at the problem. Zero times seven. Very simple problem here. We are going to ask ourselves the magical question of life. And the magical question of life, guys, goes like this for this class. What rule are we going to use? And we're going to look at the zeros rule and the sevens rule. On my magical list of rules that shows me how to solve any multiplication problem in the universe, as long as one of the terms is zero through 12, I can find a rule or two that will solve this problem. I have not learned my sevens rule yet. I'm not doing that until the very end, of, you know, until like lesson number, I don't know, six. So I want to look at this and I want to say, what rule am I going to use? I want to pick the easiest rule. The easiest rule is the zeros rule. That means that seven is my base number. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my magical list that's going to show me exactly how to solve all of life's problems. And it tells me zero times any base number equals zero, including seven. If the if the base number is, is seven, the answer to this is zero. Why don't we just go ahead and learn how to do a three-digit number times zero? Don't be scared. Don't run away screaming. All you're going to do when you look at this problem is ask yourself, what rule am I going to use? The rule that you're going to use is obviously the zeros rule. We do not have a 698 rule. I'm going to circle the 698. That is my base number. And I know from referencing my magical list, which is going to give me rules that are going to tell me how to do any problem in the universe, I know it says zero times any base number equals zero. And I can just come here and say, all right, I know that that's zero. Zero times zero, couldn't get simpler than that. I can, I can apply my little strategy here. I look at this problem, I ask myself, what rule am I going to use? Well, this is easy. It's going to be the zeros rule because my only two choices are zero and zero. So I'm going to I'm going to put a check mark over one of them, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to circle the other one. That's my base number. 0 times anything equals 0 and I am good to go on zeros. Keep in mind guys that you can use this into your harder maths because this is going to work if you do 0 times a fraction. Guess what guys? 0. 0 times a negative number? 0. Always going to be true. Zero times a huge, huge number with 10 digits. Answer is zero. 100% of the time. This rule is going to be right until you guys are 125 years old. And it's never going to be wrong. Zero times any base number, meaning any number at all, no matter what it is, a decimal fraction, negative number, huge number, small number, tiny number, whatever, um, the answer is going to be zero. Easiest rule ever. Um, now look at this guys, this is easy and I hope you guys are good. Um, in my live class, I ask everyone to wave their hands around like a maniac if they get, if they're good on the zeros. So you can do that right now if you want. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to the second easiest one, the ones guys, this is so simple and it's always going to be true. If you have one times any base number in the whole universe, it's going to equal itself the base number. So you are able to, um, you know, multiply one times anything, any number in the whole universe. And let's look at some examples here. One times six, I can look at this problem and I can ask myself, what rule am I going to use? And that's why I ask myself when I get to any multiplication problem. As long as one of the terms is zero through 12, 
you are able to just follow this magical list that I am going to give you as a printout. Um, and you are able to get an answer to the problem. One times six. If I get here, I'm going to ask myself, what role am I going to use? I'm going to use my ones role because my ones role is easier than my sixes. I'm not learning my sixes until lesson six or whatever it is. So I am going to say um, I'm using my ones role. Six is my base number. Now, my magical paper is going to tell me exactly what to do. One times any base number equals itself the base number. So I know that this answer is going to simply be the circled number. That's my base number. I know that this answer is going to be six. One times six is six. One time anything, I'm sorry, one times anything is anything. Like, you know, wait, that didn't sound right. One times any number equals that number. Even if it's negative, fraction, big number, small number, decimal, whatever. You are able to use this forever. Zero times one. Oh, this one looks a little interesting. We learned the zeros rule, but let's use the ones rule to solve this problem. I'm going to look at this problem and I'm going to ask myself, what rule am I going to use? I know that I could use my zeros rule, and I hope you guys know what the answer is to this, because if I use my zeros rule, check this out, if I use my zeros rule, one is my base number, I'm going to go to my magical list and I'm going to see zero times any base number equals zero. So I get, I get the answer of zero here. Okay, now let's back it up. Let's back it up. Let's say I get to this problem and I don't want to use the zeros rule. I want to try the ones rule, see if that works. See if I get the same answer. So I, I can say, what rule am I going to use? I'm going to use my ones rule. Zero is my base number. One times any base number equals itself the base number. Guess what, guys? Zero. Same answer. You can choose which rule you want to use. When you guys get comfortable with all of these rules, you are able to choose which one you want to use. You And choose the one that's easier for you. I don't even care which one you use. You could use zeros, you could use one. But what me and your parents and your teachers want to have for you is we want you guys to know the answer to zero times one. No matter how you get it, you can use zeros roll, you can use ones roll, do whatever you want. Um, now we have 145 times one. Now this looks really scary and you might think, well, wait a minute, I thought this was a beginner class. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And it's not a beginner class, guys. This is a class for everyone. Parents sit in and learn in this class. So, you know, enjoy it. Um, but if I get to this um, problem, I'm going to ask myself, what rule am I going to use? I'm going to use my ones rule. 145 is my base number. And I know from my magical rules list that tells me how to solve all of life's problems, it says one times any base number equals itself the base number. And I know that this answer is 145. And I'm good to go. Um, because I, because, you know, that's how you do a ones problem. Remember with multiplication, it doesn't matter what order the numbers are in. It's just like addition. You know how in addition, if you do one plus two equals three and two plus one equals three, the same is true for multiplication. It doesn't matter what order the numbers are in. Now for subtraction and division, it matters what order the numbers are in because you're going to generate different answers for those problems if you mix up the numbers. Not true for multiplication. That's what makes it very manageable, guys. You can choose what rule to use. It doesn't matter what order the, the numbers are in. And you can just succeed with this and just go nuts because you have these magical rules that are going to give you the answer um, to anything. Um, all right, now we're going to get a little more mathy here, okay? So I don't want anyone to like run away screaming. But what I need y'all to realize about the twos rule, all right? So we're good on the zeros, we're good on the ones. Now we're going to do the twos, and I know it's going to sound a little, it's mathy, all right? Listen, don't run away screaming, don't cry. Because all we're going to do is look at what this is saying. If I get to a problem that is two times any base number, I can get the answer to two times any base number, by doubling the base number, add the base number to itself. And I thought I would put these birds here because the I'm sorry, I sort of doubled the birds, just saying. Um, so you double the base number. So let's think about that for a second. Everybody just relax. I know this sounds mathy. Do you agree with me that when I multiply a number times two, if I'm multiplying a number times two, do y'all agree with me that what I'm doing when I multiply a number by two? is I'm doubling it. Do you agree with me on that? Now, 
I hope so. Do you agree? It's true. If you if you didn't know it, it's true. You're doubling the number when you multiply it by two every time. Every time. Every time for the rest of your life. If you see something times two, you're doubling it. Even if it's a fraction, you're doubling the fraction. Do you agree that when you double a number, when you double a number, you can double a number by adding the base number to itself? You can double a base number by adding the base number to itself. If I have five Skittles right here and I want to double my Skittles, I am going to have to steal five Skittles from you. And then I I have now doubled my Skittles because I have five Skittles originally. And now I took five Skittles from you. I'm sorry, I'll give them back after I touch them. Okay. Um, Five Skittles here. I double them by taking your five Skittles. Now I have five plus five equals 10. Five times two equals 10. And that is, um, you know, that's, that's, multiplying times two. That's like an easy example. Now let's look at some examples here and I'm going to show you some mental math strategies that I'm, that you guys are going to be learning throughout this course, um, how to make problems easier without having to memorize. So if you get to two times nine and you're like, Oh, I don't have that memorized. I don't know what that is. So let's say a teacher is asking you, what is two times nine? And you're like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Is it, is it 18? Is it 19? Is it whatever? I don't know what it is. Um, now, what you can do is you can say to yourself, what rule am I going to use? The rule that we're going to use here, guys, is not our nines rule because we have a nines rule, but we haven't learned it yet. So we're definitely going to use the twos rule because that is easier. The twos rule is easier. So we're going to circle the nine. That's my base number. I am going to go over here to my magical list and it tells me two times any base number equals double the base number, add the base number to itself. Guys, do you agree with me? And I hope you do that two times nine is exactly the same thing as nine plus nine. Do you agree with me on that? Two times nine is exactly the same thing as nine plus nine. And I know that because of my rule. And you guys might have already known that when you got to class, depending on what grade you're in and what you've learned and, um, you know, what you understand about math. If you don't, if you have not learned that yet and you do not know that, that is okay. I am here to teach you. Two times nine is the same thing as nine plus nine. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people in my classes get to nine plus nine and they're like, oh, I hate nine plus nine. I hate doubling my numbers. It's horrible and I get a headache. Ah! So what I want to show you is a little technique that you can use when you're adding unfriendly numbers. And I call nines unfriendly numbers. Sevens are unfriendly. Eights are unfriendly. Nines are unfriendly. They're kind of just like hard to add in your head. And, and that is true for adults too, guys. Do not, do not think, oh, I'm horrible at math. Do not think that because you guys are good at math. And I'm about to make you better at math with this trick. If you're looking at nine plus nine and your brain just turns to mashed potatoes, think about it in terms of Skittles. If I have nine Skittles in this hand and I have nine Skittles in this hand and you're asking me, how many Skittles do we have total? And I say, well, I don't know. We have nine plus nine. Let's count them up. You know, let's count them up. And you say, no, we don't have to count them up. That's going to take too long. And then you're going to touch all my Skittles. It's going to be horrible. So you might say, you know what we could do is what if we moved a Skittle over? What if we moved a Skittle from one pile of nine to the other pile of nine? And what we're doing here, guys, is we're breaking this problem down into kindergarten level understanding, kindergarten level skills, because we just moved a Skittle from one pile to the other. And look how much easier we made this problem. All three of these problems are asking for the same answer. 10 plus eight is the easiest one up here because we know 10 plus eight. Almost everyone that comes through my class knows that. If you don't know that, all you have to do is do eight plus zero is eight. One plus zero is one. It's 18. Because we know 10 plus eight is 18, we know nine plus nine is 18. Therefore, we know that two times nine is 18. Magical. And you can go through this process in your brain. 
You don't need a piece of paper for this. If your teacher comes up to you and asks you, what is two times nine? And you're like, ah! and then you say, wait a minute, Miss Tracy taught me. If you're doing two times a base number, you double the base number, add the base number to itself. Nine plus nine, nine plus nine. Ooh, that's hard. I'm going to move a Skittle over. 10 plus eight, 18. And your teacher hands you a million dollars. No, I don't know. They're not probably going to hand you a million dollars, but they will be very proud of you. And they'll think you memorized it, but you didn't memorize it. You just used the twos roll. And you can do it. The more you practice with this stuff, the faster you'll be. So you'll be able to double da base da ba, and you'll be able to do it like super duper quick. The crazier I say it, the better you'll remember it. I don't know. Um, by the way, class gets a little crazy a few lessons in. We get a little, there's a lot of dabbing. There's a lot of energy. Okay, so um, be excited for that. 12 times two, if I get here, I'm gonna ask myself, what rule am I gonna use? The rule that I'm gonna use here is my twos rule. 12 is my base number. So I'm going to reference my magical list, but you know what? I'm getting good at this where I, I know that if I'm multiplying a base number times two, that I double the base number, add the base number to itself. So I'm going to bop over here and I'm going to think about this in my brain as 12 plus 12. These are the same. Th these two problems are asking for the same answer. 12 plus 12 is easy. 12 plus 12, all I have to do is do two, two plus two is four. One plus one is two and it's 24 and I'm done, 24. So a teacher comes up and says, what is 12 times two? That's a big number. Don't be scared. Just say, wait, it's times two. All I got to do is double the 12. 12 plus 12. That's easy. There's no remainders. I don't have to carry a one. I don't have to do anything confusing. It's, it's just 24. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. 24. Boom. My teacher thinks I'm amazing. And the hardest thing I had to do was add two plus two. You know what I'm saying? it's amazing okay so now let's look at another one i have a couple i have a, a several twos problems here 26 times two we're getting bigger here oh no what are we gonna do don't run away screaming all we're gonna do here is recognize all right and i'm gonna show you a way to do this in your head this looks scary i know it does i know it does but if i get to this problem i'm gonna ask myself what rule am i gonna use the rule that i'm gonna use is clearly the twos rule because I don't have a 26 rule. I am gonna bop over here, and you guys are getting the hang of this now, that 26 times two is exactly the same thing as 26 plus 26. Here's the deal, guys. Doing 26 plus 26 is very hard to do in your head because you like what we're taught in school and what your parents were taught in school and what your math teachers were taught in school and what you're taught in school is to add six plus six first and you get two, and then you carry a one and you do two plus two is four plus one is five. What a mess that is, guys. That's kind of a mess. I can't do that in my head. And even when I do it on paper, I don't know if that answer is correct. I have no idea. So I'm going to show you guys a mental math strategy to do 26 plus 26. That's going to blow your mind. Okay. Ah! I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Hold on. Oh no, I can't get it back. I can't get it back. Guys, hold on. Let me try to get it back undo. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now look at this guys, by the way, technical issues like that happen throughout class, but I'm over it. Okay. I don't worry about it because you can't worry about stuff like that, guys. You just gotta, you can't be perfect. All right. <laughs> Nobody is perfect. It's okay. If you're not, I'm not. Okay. Um, so now look at this guys, I'm going to show you an easier way to do this. So I'm going to bop over here and let's say I recognize 26 times two is 26 plus 26. So I'm going to bop over here and I'm going to say, all right, I need to add 26 plus 26. I don't know how to get rid of this because I tried and I undid everything. So just pretend you can't see that. If I am adding 26 plus 26, does everyone agree with me that in my mind, like if someone says 26 times two, if my teacher says 26 times two, which by the way, your teachers are not going to expect you to do this problem in your head, but I'm about to show you how. Um, 26 times two do you guys recognize, you know that that's 26 plus 26, but do you recognize that 26 is the same thing as 20 plus six? So look what I can do here. I can, I can look at this and say 20 plus six, 20 plus six plus 20 plus six. And, and look at this guys. I have now, like if a teacher says 26 times two, I say, all right, I learned from Miss Tracy. I know that that's 26 um, plus 26. 
That's hard to do in my head. I'm going to break the numbers apart by place value. 20 plus 6 plus 20. Oh my goodness. 20 plus 6 plus 20 plus 6. Guys, if you do that in your head, 20 plus 20 is 40, right? And what is 6 plus 6? If you need if you need additional help with doubles, guys, I have this sheet that I can send you. Um, and you can message me for this double sheet if you want, like even, I don't know, even if you haven't enrolled yet or whatever, but I'll send this to you. It's a double sheet. And, and this is the kind of stuff like in first grade, the teachers wanted you to memorize this. You know, they wanted you to know that six plus six, where is it up here? Six plus six is 12. Um, but you can use kind of like, you can use your fingers or whatever until you have that all memorized. Okay. Um, you can also use mental math strategies like six plus six is two more than five plus five. And I know five plus five is 10. So I know six plus six is 12. And then a lot of you guys are able to add 40 plus 12 in your heads to get 52. But if you're not able to do that, you can break apart the 12 by place value to make it easier on your brain cells, which is the whole name of the game here. We wanna make this easier on our brain cells by doing 40 plus 10, plus two. And look at this, guys. 40 plus 10 is what? Oh, 50. And 50 plus two is what? It's 52. Now, some of y'all might say, well, why are we doing all this stuff over here? We're doing this in our heads. We're not worrying about writing it down. Now, you can write it down when you're practicing it. You can write it down while you're getting comfortable with it, while you're learning it. But you do not have to write this stuff down. Your teachers are not going to need you to write this down to show how you got the answer. If you if you're needing to show how you got the answer to 26 um, times two, you can just show this 26 plus 26 and then do all of this stuff in your head. And and then you're you're able to generate an answer super duper quick. You see? <gasps> so exciting. All right. Let's see if I have another um, example here. I don't know if I do. Yes. Thirty seven. And let me check what I have. Oh, I have some other ones. Let's do um, let's do this one. Two times. Ninety three. Try not to pass out. This is not a hard problem. We're going to skip that last one. We're going to do this one because um, I know my lesson is getting a little long here. Um, I like to keep my lessons like a half hour. So if I get to this two times. Ninety three. I am going to ask myself, what role am I going to use? Same thing I would do on a little sim simple problem, little problem that's like a single digit. I'm going to say I'm using the twos roll. 93 is my base number. Now, y'all are getting the hang of this now. 93 plus 93 is the same thing, the same asking for the same answer as two times 93. Doesn't matter the order of those numbers. In either of these problems, because it's addition and multiplication, doesn't matter the order. You're just going to ask yourself, what rule am I going to use? Ch choose which rule you want to use. The other number is the base number. And then you come over here, um, 93 plus 93. Um, this is hard. I don't know how to do this. Let's see. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it over here and break it up and see if this makes it easier. 90 plus 3 plus 90 plus 3. Now, you guys might be freaking out going, oh, my gosh, I don't know how to do this. 9 plus nine. We did this. We did this um, earlier. Nine plus nine is 18. This is 180 plus six. And I just kind of like made that easier in my brain by breaking it apart so that the hardest thing I had to do was add 90 plus 90. Um, and if I wanted to, I could make life easier. If I had 90 Skittles here and 90 Skittles here, what if I moved 10 Skittles over if I move 10 Skittles over, now I have 100 plus 80, 180. So 180 plus six is 186. And that's the answer here. Um, It's 186. And you guys can get this answer in your head with some practice. And it's amazing. And you guys can um, totally impress everybody with this. Um, let's see here. We're going to, and I hope you guys understood this. Remember, you can rewatch this video if you want. I hope you guys come and enroll in my class. Because we're doing this kind of mental math all throughout. And I'm going to be sort of exercising your brains to think beyond carrying the one and think beyond um, standard algorithm, which, by the way, guys, the way your parents learn to do a problem like 93 times two, um, we learned it because I consider my myself like your parents. We learned how to do this problem by setting it up like this and doing two times three is six. 
two times nine is 18. Now that's easy. Like that looks pretty easy, but it's hard to do that in your head. And also, I don't know if that answer is right. Like, I don't even know if that answer is right. Cause I was just multiplying these weird numbers different times. And I, I'm starting at the back of the problem working over. If I do it the way that I'm showing you guys on the screen here, um, I am working in the direction that I read, which is more natural for me. So I'm working from, I'm changing two times 93 to 90 plus three plus 90 plus three. And then I can just kind of work this way. 90 plus 90 is 180 and three plus three is six and it's 186. And my brain moves that way because it's the way that I read. Um, and it's the way you read numbers, you know? So you want to kind of take advantage of these things and use these things because it's going to make you quicker and better at math. It's going to make you, um, you know, a lot better. So this is a sample of my class. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we are now done with the zeros, the ones, and the twos. And as you'll notice, we were able to knock out a bunch of problems in the other fact family lists because you guys learned how to do zero times anything, one times anything, two times anything. So we're like wiping out problems from every list every time we master a fact family. And, and this is great because by the time we get to the hard ones, which are the sixes, the sevens, and the twelves, we are really not going to have many problems left because we're going to know how to do them with other rules. The rules are always going to work. I hope you come and learn with me. Um, please come learn with me because I, I enjoy it so much. And um, I think you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being math geniuses. Come and learn with me and we can um, go even further with it. So you guys can um, learn all of these facts. And then you can come and take my division class and you can come and take my long division class and you can come and take my fractions class. I have review classes. I have all kinds of things set up on Flex. So come visit me. Thank you so much, guys. You're amazing. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>